Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Election Petition Tribunal nullifies the election of the Senator representing Kogi West in the National Assembly, Dino Milaye, orders fresh election to fill the senatorial seat. President Buhari says plans are on to overhaul the Nigeria police structure to tackle current security challenges as he hosts traditional rulers from the northern part of the country. Federal government to license online television and radio stations as part of wide-ranging reforms approved by President Buhari for the broadcast industry. And Amazon fires spark a diplomatic tension as France and Ireland threaten to dump trade deal with South American nations unless Brazil fights the inferno. On business news tonight, Securities and Exchange Commission advocates exemption of value-added tax on capital market transactions, reports over 3.4 million units of shares from consolidated multiple subscriptions. As sports news tonight, Nigeria women miss out of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics after losing to Egypt in the final of the table tennis team event at the 2019 African Games. And from Abuja, more reactions trail the inauguration of new ministers as prominent Nigerians weigh in on the controversies surrounding the composition of the federal cabinet. The ripples from the 2019 general elections are not over yet. Day after day, electoral petition tribunals make verdicts either affirming the victory of the winners or otherwise. Today, the pronouncement from the tribunal hearing suits that emanated from the National and State Assembly elections in Gogi states did not favor Senator Dino Malaye as the judges unanimously agreed to sack him from the National Assembly. Mr. Malaye's closest rival, Smart Adiemi of the APC, had challenged his victory at the tribunal on the grounds that there were cases of irregularities, including overvoting and non-compliance with the Electoral Act. In their judgments, the three-man panel, led by Justice A. O. Chijoke, unanimously granted Senator Adeyemi's plea and affirmed that indeed the election was shrouded in controversy and marred by widespread malpractice. The panel therefore ordered that a fresh election be conducted in the senatorial district. In that election, Senator Malaye scored a total of 85,395 votes to defeat his APC opponent, Smart Adeyemi, who polled 66,902. Meanwhile, Senator Dino Malaye and his arch-rival Smart Adeyemi have been speaking on today's judgment by the Election Petition Tribunal. While Senator Adeyemi describes the judgment as deserved justice for him, Senator Malaye believes the judgment is a ploy to distract him from pursuing his governorship ambition in Kogi State. But Senator Malaye maintains that he will get justice at the appeal court, just as Senator Smart Adeyemi insists on asking the appeal court to declare him winner of the February 23rd senatorial election. The lead judgment is a travesty and miscarriage of justice. It has demonstrated the desperation to distract me because of my gubernatorial election. But I want to say that I cannot be distracted. I will not be distracted. My name is Daniel. I will not fall. There's a deliberate plan since I have been identified as a man that have the highest and best capacity to unseat Governor Ayabelo. Not only to unseat him, but to liberate the wonderful people of Kogi State from perfidy, from maladministration, from poverty and hunger. So honestly, everything is fine, everything is okay. Um, he who loves, loves, loves best. I believe that the Court of Appeal will give us justice. Well, for, for us, um, I must tell you that why thanking the, the tribunal? Uh, as a law student, I do know the phrase that um, a court is not just a court of law, but a court of justice. In our petition, we did uh, ask for a rerun of the election, because at that time we didn't have the required documents to enable us to um, make a proper request of we being declared the rightful uh, winner of that election. I, I think in summary, um, we, we are looking forward to, to, to meeting him in, court of, in the Court of Appeal. And uh, we are going to probably go into cross, cross uh, appeal to say that um, 
based on the submission of, of, the, of the tribunal, that 40, over 40,000 of the votes were in excess, then we should be declared. We, even if we didn't ask for it, the court is not just a court of law, but a court of justice. A court of justice, because we have been cheated, we have been robbed. Staying with legal matters, another major pronouncement was made today by the Federal High Court in Abuja. The court is asking the Minister of Petroleum Resources to grant the renewal of the oil mineral lease 11 to Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria for 20 years. The trial judge, Justice Taiwo Taiwo, in his ruling, ordered that the renewal would be for 20 years and not 30, as requested by the company. The suit by Shell was instituted against the Minister of Petroleum Resources and the Minister of State by the oil producing company. President Muhammad Buhari doubles as the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Away from legal matters now, the President says he has commenced the process of revamping and repositioning the structure of the Nigeria Police Force through the provision of modern technological gadgets to meet rising security challenges across the country. President Mahmoud Buhari made the announcement today when he received traditionally, traditional rulers from the north led by His Eminence Muhammadu Sayyad Abubakar III at the State House. Our correspondent Gloria Mizuke reports. President Muhammad Buhari received traditional leaders from the north in a meeting at the council chamber. I have decided to meet with your highnesses. This engagement, according to the president, is to firm up commitments in line with fresh policies and strategies introduced to address insecurity. These policies and programs include a robust rebumping of police intelligence gathering capacity and the significant boosting of the members of security personnel in our local communities. This, in specific terms, will include recruiting more police officers and doing so whenever possible from their local government areas, where they will then be stationed in the best tradition of policing worldwide. The president also explained that the new strategies is the reason behind the return of the Ministry of Police Affairs. We intend to improve the equipping of the police force with advanced technology and equipment that can facilitate their work. To drive this, I recently created a full-fledged Ministry of Police Affairs. On his part, the Sultan of Sokoto, Mohamedou Sa'ad Abubakar III, vows that the leaders will redouble their efforts to address insurgency. As the meeting came to an end, the traditional leaders expressed confidence in the string of efforts, policies and strategies adopted in the last few weeks by the president to bring an end to the nation's security challenge. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. And while the president is making efforts to restructure the police, the governor of Borno State, Babagada Zulum, believes the Civilian Joint Task Force is critical to ending insurgency in his state. Governor Zulum is also canvassing for the police to be re-equipped to support the task force towards putting an end to the insurgency. He was speaking with State House correspondents after a private meeting with the president. This intense proximity to Morocco intense proximity to Algeria and intense proximity to Sudan as well as to Libya. And it is a sub-Saharan region. It's very difficult to man such areas. Because of the porosity of our borders, just to mention among others, we have some certain major problems in Borno State. Yes, Boko Haram uh, started in our own place. Yes, I admit it. Most of them are my tribes. But believe me sincerely, uh, their composition now cuts across almost every, almost every ethnic, ethnic group in Nigeria. We are also advocating that the federal government should also look into the possibility of providing temporary uh, uh, permit to the Nigerian police to carry some of the weapons considering the lean numerical strength of the military. That will now 
strengthen their numbers and then ensure that where there is limitation in terms of numerical strength, police can supplement. In the meantime, about 133 Nigerian refugees, mostly women and children, who fled the country at the height of the Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast have returned home. The returnees touched down at the Yola International Airport aboard Nigerian Air Force Airline on Thursday in the company of officials of the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Eternally Displaced Persons, UNHCR, as a national organization for migration and other humanitarian organizations. The Nigerian Air Force C-130 plane arrives at the Yola International Airport, Adamawa State, with about 133 Nigerian refugees returning from the Republic of Cameroon. Men, women and children all voluntarily returning to Adamawa, their home state. Some of them narrate their ordeal. We were in Cameroon for five years, but I left my husband there. This is because he wants to have us this farm before returning home in the next batch. While in Cameroon, we suffered. We didn't have water, and we had to stress a lot to fetch firewood for our cooking. Because of, you know, it is not our country. We are saying thank God because of they are already helped us to keep us and then to give us food and to give us a place to, to stay. Yes, we are set on God. The Director of Refugees and Migrant Affairs, Mr. Lawal Hamidu, says the returnees will be checked to know their health status. We are working on what we call health surveillance to make sure that uh, no unknown disease comes this way. So the first step is to, to go to the Minister of Health, where you will screen, then you go to immigration, to document your nationality properly. The refugees get some food, after which vital information about them is captured. The Minister of Humanitarian Services, Disaster Management and Internally Displaced Persons, Sadia Farouk, says this is the first batch of returnees. We have just kick-started the first phase of, of this uh, program. We have brought in about 100 and and 33 uh, returnees uh, back home. So we feel good. The government of Nigeria uh, is welcoming them back home. The government of Adama State is welcoming them back home. And they're going to be integrated back into the society uh, very soon. The Adama State government is also happy to receive them. It is uh, delighting to us and uh, we, we welcome them back home. And uh, right now, they are going to be moved into uh, a reception area for some security uh, profiling to be done. While that is being done, we would be able to invite the community leaders, specifically the communities to which these returnees claim to have run out of, for them to be able to come identify their own award members and take them back home. There are about 97,000 Nigerians taking refuge in Cameroon, 8,000 from Adamawa State, while the rest are from Borno and Yobe State. The evacuation from Cameroon is expected to continue until all those who are willing to return are brought back home. In part two after the break, Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki says crisis in the State House of Assembly is over as he receives reports of committees set up to resolve the matter. Please stay with us.